this book is like very, very cheesy, but I still love it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book recommendation for you. Before we get started, I just want to show you my sweatshirt my best friend got me. It literally says it's a good day to read a book. It's pink and it's oversized. Jess is like the bestest best friend a girl could ever ask for. <laughs> okay, so I posted a thingy on my bookstagram asking what kind of book video you'd like to see. Maybe about like 80% of it was like Grumpy X Sunshine. So I thought I would share some of my favorite Grumpy X Sunshine books since it's one of my favorite tropes. Let's get started. Also, look at my book setup right now. I just moved it for like the 100th time. I'm a little bit obsessed with this. This is the first book I want to talk to you about. It's The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This is single mom meets grumpy rich guy, I want to say. He is creating a dating app. He kind of just needs public appearances to kind of get his app out there. His company i want to say offers to pay jess the main female character to go on a few dates with him because they supposedly matched on this dating app and they are kind of trying to figure out why because they're such opposites and he could never be attracted to her and he could never like date someone like her she agrees to like fake date him because they're paying her a lot of money he kind of warms up to her though and he kind of like bonds with her daughter and stuff like that so i thought this was a super cute little read okay next this is like the most overhyped book on tiktok but i personally love it i love a good cheesy romance but it's the love hypothesis by by ali hazelwood so olive kind of needs to find a boyfriend because her best friend wants to date this guy Olive's been on a date with. Her friend thinks that Olive is not over this guy because they've dated before, which if you think that, why would you date him? You know? Common sense, my girl. It's girl code. But anyway, Olive is such a nice girl. She's like, I'm over him. I really don't care. Like, I'm dating someone. She's not dating anyone. She literally kisses the first guy she sees so that she can prove to her friend that she is over him and she's dating someone. She ends up kissing Dr. Adam, who is the meanest professor, like, ever. Everyone hates him. Everyone's afraid of him. He just has a reputation. He's a grumpy old man, basically. She kisses him, and then they kind of, like, work out a deal, like, he needs her for something, she needs him for something. So basically the whole point of the story is that Adam needs to kind of prove to these people, these like important people, that he is ready to settle down so that he could have money for like his research. They kind of just don't want to give out money to like single people. Adam's theory is that if he pretends to date Olive, he'll get the money for his research or whatever. And then Olive suggests that if she dates Adam, they have like this deal going on, her friend wouldn't feel bad about dating her ex. I think it's funny and I think it's like adorable the way Adam treats Olive and how he feeds her and he plans like these coffee dates for her and basically shoves Starbucks in her face. I love that. I would recommend it for a fun read. If you're in a reading slump, I think this is like a great book that will help you get out of your reading slump. Okay, next book we have is an Emily Henry book and this was my first Emily Henry book that I read and I actually liked it. It's People We Meet on Vacation. Two best friends, Poppy and Alex, they met in college and they've been going on these summer vacations for like 10 years now. Every year they plan somewhere they go and they have the time of their life. Poppy's like very outgoing, she loves meeting people, she loves talking to people and stuff like that. And then Alex is very like closed off, he's like a little like bookish nerd kind of. And he doesn't really have many friends and I feel like Poppy is like his only friend to be honest. He might have like one or two friends. Something kind of happens to them one year and they haven't seen each other or spoken to each other ever since. And Poppy is kind of having like writer's block but something happens and poppy misses her best friend and she wants to go on a trip so she calls them up and she plans this whole trip she's hoping that this trip kind of repairs what was broken all those years ago kind of get his insight on things as well and i love this book because it goes back and forth of how they met every vacation they took and to present day so i thought it was like a really nice fun read and i do love how 
Poppy and Alex are completely opposite and different, but they bond and they have like a special connection and they get each other. I feel like this book is not very like a romance romance book, but it's more focused on like friendship. The next book I have is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I haven't seen the movie yet and I don't know if I want to see the movie. I feel like Josh starts off as a grumpy guy because of Lucy's point of view of him. And I feel like in the movie, he's not as grumpy. He seems more like sunshine. He wants to kind of get to know her. Just like judging from the movie or like scenes that I've seen so far. This is solely based on Lucy's point of view and I feel like she just makes him out as a grumpy type of guy. Everyone in the office just like considers him the same way as well. It's workplace romance and they just cannot stand each other like they are rivals it's about them fighting over a position that just opened up and it's like a higher up position so if josh gets the position lucy's not going to want to work there because she doesn't want him to be her boss and then obviously for josh it's the same eventually they're um scheming and everything like that kind of turns into like a game for them and they ended up bonding over like events that they go to honestly this book was super funny i loved it and i love a good workplace romance enemies to lovers vibe the next book i have is a spanish of deception by elena armaz i honestly have a special place in my heart for this book i loved it so this is also fake dating so lena needs a date to her sister's wedding in spain and she doesn't want to go alone because her ex is there and her ex has already moved on her family is going to pressure her into like finding a date they're going to talk about her you know how it goes and so Aaron, the grumpy co-worker offers to be her date to the wedding and she's refusing him she's like, you'd be the last person on earth I'd ever ask to go he's just always been like really cold towards his co-workers and her she ends up saying yes lena is a bit whiny but she's very relatable i love her and aaron's always taking care of her he's always feeding her and he learned spanish for her because he obviously has to try to impress her parents those were all standalones now i'm gonna get into like the series first series i have is the addicted slash calloway sister series by Krista and Becca Ritchie and the first book is Hot House Flower and this is about Daisy's and Reich's story so Reich is like this very I kind of want to say that he's a bit uptight and but he's like very grumpy and just like has this like don't mess with me type of vibe he's like very outgoing as well and he has a very soft spot for Daisy and her sisters Daisy is this very fun, bubbly, also very outgoing, she's very adventurous, and she chases danger, and I really admire her a lot, and I feel like she's super relatable, and Reich just brings out the best in her. They've always just like had a connection ever since they like laid eyes on each other. I wasn't too fond of the relationship because she did meet her when she was a minor, and they've always had like this flirty like back and forth bickering and i always thought it was cute and funny but um this is probably like my first like age gap book i mean they're only like seven years apart i truly loved it because it just shows that Reich doesn't really care much about people like he's had a awful childhood obviously and so did daisy but he literally would do anything for her and just like watching him be there for her and protecting her dropping everything to run to her basically is kind of what made me fell so hard in love she is a model so she's off to paris for a show something tragic happens she calls reich and he comes to rescue her they pretty much spend like a couple of days or so in paris and then um the relationship just kind of forms i just can't hate on this book and i just can't hate on daisy for what for like any reason i feel like she just needs to be protected at all costs and reich does an amazing job at that so okay next we have the twisted series and i'm pretty sure 
every single guy in the Twisted Siri, except for Josh, is a grumpy old man. And I have a lot to say about these people. My favorite book in the Twisted series is the second book, which is Twisted Games. It's about Bridget's and Reese's point of view, and I loved it. But I also love Twisted Hate as well, but that's not in the series because Josh is such a sunshine boy and he deserves the world, and I love him. But let's start with these. By the way, the series is by Anna Hong, and I love her. She writes very descriptive spicy scenes. This is the first book. It's called Twisted Love. I did not like this one. It was very dark for like no reason and it was lacking too and I liked Alex who's the main male character. He's a grumpy billionaire. I just did, didn't like what he did but um so basically Alex is Ava's brother's best friend and she has to move in next door with him or he moves in next door with her to keep an eye on her because her brother is going away on some trip because he gets jealous when she goes out with other guys and stuff like that and that's when he kind of realized that he's kind of falling for her um, but he has a really dark secret and you kind of find out about it at the end and it it made me just made me not like him for that um he did redeem himself though in the other books he, he was really good to her but i just felt like his book was lacking um next is twisted games my favorite book loved it so bridget is a real life princess and reese is her bodyguard this is my first bodyguard romance book that i read and i absolutely loved it i ate it up so reese is like this grumpy bodyguard he literally just like forbids her from doing certain things and she's like this very adventurous person she just wants to explore da -da 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 -da. after spending so much time together they kind of create this bond and it's a very strong bond until she realizes that she has to head back home because she's going to take the crown. This book is basically just her trying to learn more about being a queen. So she goes back home and Reese is kind of like not wanted and so she tries to like find a way for him to like stay and tries to like find a way to like be with him. Okay, the last book in the Twisted series is Twisted Lies and this is Stella's and Christian's story and this this was the only book I tabbed because I relate to Stella so much but I ended up not really liking it as much like after a couple of weeks of reading this book. But Stella is an influencer, she has a stalker and Christian like owns a security business. Um, he's obsessed with her. He doesn't like it's it's just like an infatuation he has with her. And they kind of start working together to find out who her stalker is. So Christian and Sela made a deal that they would fake date because he needs her whenever he wants to go to events, he wants to have someone on his arm, and she decides to privately but not secretly date him for her social media accounts. Basically she'll post pictures of like his arm and it kind of jump starts her engagement kind of and she's she's back on her sleigh error. Honestly I read it because of her and I gave it a good rating because of her because she's super relatable and I kind of see myself in her. Okay, another book from Anna Hong is King of Wrath. This is the first book in her new series, Kings of Sins. It's about billionaire Dante. He has no intention of getting married, selling down, ha having a girlfriend, whatever. And then there's Vivian, whose parents are pretty much pressuring her to get married, settling down, stuff like that. She's her own businesswoman and she's doing her own thing and she doesn't have any time for dating and stuff like that. Vivian's dad is Dante's enemy and he has blackmail against him and he's using the blackmail to get him to marry his daughter. And Vivian is like super confused as to why a billionaire would want to marry her. Like she's she's from new money, like there's nothing special about her, but like Obviously, she's like super rich and stuff like that, but what could she offer him that he doesn't already have? It was like that kind of scenario. So Dante has like no other choice but to say yes to this like engagement. Dante plays along with this engagement until he can destroy this blackmail. Honestly, this is like one of those books that will get you out of your reading slump. It was super fast paced and it literally like 
got straight to the point okay next two books i have is by lauren asher actually the next couple of books is by her like her entire like series we have the fine print we have terms and condition and final offer the third book comes out next month and that is the only book i wanted to read because cal is another sunshine boy that i am dying dying to know more about like he is just so funny i feel like i fell in love with him the first time he was mentioned i think in the fine print but we got to see more of him in terms and conditions and i'm like i need more the first and second book are about the middle brother and the oldest brother and they're both grumpy this book is basically about their grandfather who passed away and in his will he has specific tasks for each brother that they need to fulfill in order to gain their inheritance so Declan is the oldest brother. He has to find a wife in order to get his inheritance or he has to be engaged and have a baby or something like that. And then Rowan has to um, renovate Dreamland. Dreamland is like kind of like Disneyland. It's like an amusement park that they own. Okay, the last two books that I want to talk to you about is from the Dirty Air series by Lauren Asher as well. So it is the first book, which is Throttle, and this is the fourth book, which is Redeemed. I feel like the second book, Liam is definitely a sunshine boy because he is always so happy and bubbly. And I just don't feel like he has as much trauma as these two guys. And there's also Jax, he's, he's very grumpy as well, but I feel like Elena is like a fake sunshine girl like she has trauma as well but she puts on this like fake sunshine bubbly act and i didn't really want to include that book in this because i felt like that book is kind of like grumpy x grumpy in a sense that was actually my favorite book in this entire series because it's like it's it was so sad it was so sad but it was also like very relatable i just didn't include it because i felt like it just doesn't fit the Grumpy X Sunshine trope as well as these two. Okay, so if you don't know what the series is about, it's about Formula One, which is car racing. And so it's sports romance. First book is about Noah and Maya's story. Noah is like the legend of like car racing. He is like super well known. He meets Maya, who is the super bubbly sunshine girl. She decides to tour with her brother who's also in the formula one who is also noah's rival her brother obviously doesn't like noah but noah seems drawn to her like the first time he laid eyes on her there's a lot going on in this book this is the last book in the series and this is about maya's brother santiago santiago is used to be a sunshine boy in the first book but now he's like super grumpy because of what happened to him and he meets chloe and it completely like changed his life um his sister saw chloe breaking into his house one night he didn't want to scare his sister so he kind of made up this lie that they were dating and they've been fake dating ever since but chloe doesn't know that santiago is a world famous race car driver nor does she knows about his traumatic past and he likes it that way so he doesn't tell her so that's a secret that's gonna blow up in their faces Okay, so those are all of my favorite or like current favorite Grumpy X Sunshine books. I really hope you guys enjoy this book recommendation video and I'll see you guys pretty soon. Bye!